Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Andrews. We are glad you're here, whether you're joining us this morning in person or joining us virtually. We are so blessed that you are all here, and please, as we begin and start and go through our praise service, please feel God's presence. Please feel God's presence as we worship our God, or God. Welcome. Family, friends, guests, and visitors, welcome both here in this sanctuary and those worshiping virtually with us. We welcome you to worship, and we give thanks for this community in all ways, shapes, and forms. Today, we begin a four-week uh, series on suffering. Why does suffering occur? What is the meaning of suffering? Why do some suffer and others don't? And why are there different types of suffering? You see, none of those questions are easy, and there isn't just one simple answer. Or maybe there is. You see, that's what we're going to consider over this month of July. In this world of injustice, violence, unfairness, in this world of abuse, how do you and I, how do we as Christians navigate suffering? It's going to get real over this month. Are you ready? And so as we worship, let the Holy Spirit descend upon this place and change all things for us. We ask the Holy Spirit to descend upon us today in our hurt, our pain, our discomfort, our anger, our worry, our illness, and our concerns. And let the Holy Spirit work within you. And so let us worship. And we begin worship with our call to worship. Uh, please join in the call to worship and stand if you are able. Welcome, everyone, as we start our praise to God. Gather and sing aloud as God hears our words. We commend God's holy name and all that God is. Together, we feel the light of our Savior being absorbed in our hearts. We are fulfilled with faith, grace, and love forever. Please continue standing if you're able and join in hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. Please pass the peace of Christ to one another. Please wave to the cameras virtually. Peace be with you, and peace be with you all.
All right, Sue just walked in, so now we can stop passing the piece. I, there was per beautiful timing, Sue. Thank you. I tried. Walked in perfectly. I tried. I worked hard. <laughs> you do well. All right, life of the church. So good morning. Life of the church this morning. Our big thing for July is Vacation Bible School. The end of the month is Monday through Thursday. Um, please let Melissa Spadia know or, or Pastor Dave know if you'd like to help out. And also, please, we need people to register. We need some children. Um, so please, if you know of any children that are looking for Vacation Bible School, uh, neighbors, friends, family, please let them know. Our registration form is on the website, and it is also in the Narthex. Listen, they can come and they can sing and dance with me. Yes, they get to sing That's and dance not, with Sue. Or they could come and they could watch what an idiot I am up on, <laughs> on the altar. And if that's not incentive enough. I love it. So, and also we have the first weekend, Friday and Saturday in August, is Laity Academy. Um, and Pastor Dave is teaching a class also in Laity Academy. Please, ch I encourage you to please check that out. I've gone to that for a number of years. It's very informative, and you get to meet a lot of people. You get to connect with people in other churches in our conference. Um, I highly recommend it. If you go on epaumc.org, go to calendar, and go over to August, and click on that, and you'll find the information, the many classes to choose from, and you'll be able to register there also. All right. I think we're doing recognition now. So um, we are blessed that tomorrow we have some youth showing up to our church to help us um, do some work. So Yardley United Methodist Church um, is actually hosting a mission trip for middle school. So all of you are familiar with youth getting together and driving somewhere and going to another um, town or state and they do mission work there, right? Well, Yardley UMC decided they wanted to be that site. So years ago, they created something called My Calling, and they've been doing it for years now. Of course, COVID interrupted for a couple of years, but they're back at it. They have 30 youth coming from, I don't know how many churches are represented, and I don't know how far. I know in the past they've had um, people from New York or other states come in. So they come in for three days. They come in tonight, they leave Thursday, um, and they go to various areas in Bucks County to do um, missions work, and we're a site um, for that. So they're gonna help us maintain these extremely large grounds, because uh, I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot of grass out there, a lot of trees and other stuff, um, and just our big building. And so they're gonna be here to do that. We may go do some prayer walking next door um, and pray for the residents of Hardis um, and just for the local neighborhood. So I wanna recognize that they're here. So if you're available, they'll be here around 9.30 or so um, in the morning till around two or three. If you're around, come on by, stop by, say hello to them, find out where they're from, um, give thanks for their service here with us. So that's our recognition is for my calling and that we are, um, I think we're the only church that's a host um, site or a, a location that they're um, coming to. So I'm happy that we can do that. Ready for our Wesley prayer? So in your bulletins is the Wesley covenant prayer that we will say together. And let's, in unison, share this prayer. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will, place me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praise for you or criticize for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. And so look at those words about mid-sheet there, or mid-paragraph. Um, let me have all things, let me have nothing. And the one before that, let me be full, let me be empty. How difficult is it for you to say, let me have nothing and let me be empty and still praise God as if you have everything. Our entire series on suffering will focus on a lot of what Wesley understood, that faith should not change when we have nothing or when we are completely empty, that faith should still look the same when we have all things and we are full. And so this prayer also helps us kind of consider suffering. So I just want to make that note. All right, let's talk about some joys. Who has some joys with them? 
I mean, the bus kind of showed up today. Oh my God, this is loud. Yes, I had a joy. My wife came home from Lancaster. She was up here visiting her sister. And boy, do I have the goodies now. <laughs> Shoe fly pies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Good thing I go to the water and go swimming. <laughs> So you're just happy that she brought you back a lot of food. So you, that's all you're happy for is she brought food back. Yeah, that's good. Dennis, is that too... No, I hear an echo now. Okay. All right. You hear it? Just slight. Okay. Well, who else has a joy? No other joys? I have a joy. I'm okay. traveling to... Uh Tallahassee next weekend to visit with Erica. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so we'll spend the weekend with Erica, and then uh, the following weekend we go out to Pittsburgh to bring Megan home. Cool. With all cool. of her bag and baggage. Nice, nice. It's a joy to be here, right? And joy for those that are worshiping with us virtually to be with us. And not all the buses showed up today. That's okay. They'll show up next week. They're on vacation, yeah. All right, what are some concerns you have with you? I actually have a few concerns. Um, my oldest daughter, Erica, who's in Florida, um, is at the tail end of COVID. Mm. Um, she's, doing, she's doing well with it, but had a bit of a, um, bit of a time this week. Um, my younger brother, Sean, um, his open heart surgery is scheduled for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning um, and he's having uh, valve replacement done so please prayers for him his wife who has to sit in the waiting room alone they don't allow any more than one person um, and of course to guide the doctors and nurses hands um, and also continued prayers for my in-laws Lois and Howard Knorr as they're dealing with Lois's dementia other concerns? Uh, there's a friend of mine at the, where I live at South Haven Estates that lost her husband this week. And I have, I'd like to have prayers for Judy Gill. And I'd like prayers for my daughter who's made it out to California. Her um, fiance or her, best, her partner out there is visiting his mother for the first time, able to see her in California after two years. Oh. So they did get it out there, and um, I just hope and pray everything goes well that they can come back safe and sound on Tuesday from California. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, continued prayers for Rosemary Hoffman, yeah. who's in ProMedica, is yep. that what it's called yeah. now? On Davisville Road, it's been called a number of things in the last few years. And, and for all the homebound that can't be with us today. Yeah, I've talked to a visitor and I talked to her. So she is struggling. She definitely needs prayers. They're trying to figure out what's going on with her leg. Maybe a pinched nerve. They're not quite sure. Um, so yeah, she definitely, she wants to come home. And she's stuck there. So definitely prayers. Go visit her if you can. I know she would enjoy that. Um, she enjoyed the flowers. So thank you for, we took the flowers to her last week. She enjoyed those. Uh, I have uh, concerns for a friend, uh, Bill. I know him from the uh, EPs of St. Robert's. Uh, he has come down with COVID, but he's had other health problems too. So it has put him in Doylestown Hospital. So, you know, I hope he's doing well. And uh, uh, for my granddaughter, Catherine, uh, she's finished all of her preliminary tests prior to surgery on the 25th. Uh, so. You know, I hope everything goes well for her as also. Yeah. Okay. Any other concerns? Anything on Facebook? Okay. Oh, one in the back. Uh, oh. To your left. Yeah, I just want to say again, uh, prayers for my daughter and Jack and Ann Schaefer's granddaughter. She goes in this week for her iodine treatments, and then she has her scan on Friday. Thank you. Okay. Any others? All right, then let's pray. Uh, let's prepare to pray.
oh God, the God of abundance, the God of blessings, the God that heals, the God that saves and redeems, we come to you today in this moment, both here in this sanctuary and virtually online. We take time out of our day to worship. We give you thanks and praise, and so we begin this time with recognizing the blessings that surround us and that are for us. We give you thanks. You heard the expressions of thankfulness, but you also know what's in our hearts. So we uplift them all to you with gratitude and thanksgiving. But, oh God, we're also human. And in that humanness, we come to you with our frailties, those places where we need physical healing, we need emotional healing, we need mental healing and spiritual healing, those spaces where we want healing, but those spaces in which the healing you have for us isn't always what we want. So, oh God, we ask for healing in all ways, shapes, and forms, in new ways, in ways that comfort us and amaze us. We continue to give you thanks for all those that care for us in whatever capacity that their hands and their minds are guided by you. So, oh God, where physical healing is needed, heal. Heal in ways that help us to see you. And, oh God, in this world where there is violence, where there is addictions, where there is food insecurities and homeless issues, we ask that somehow your light be shown to them in a way in which healing occurs for them. May peace be surrounded, and may the peace that, sur that surpasses all understanding descend upon us in those places. Help each of us to know you in deeper ways, O oh God. We give you thanks, but we also ask for this healing, for we know in faith that healing occurs. So, O oh God, heal. And we ask for your guidance in this church, for we know when we get out of the way and let you lead, amazing things occur. And, O oh God, we do this because you chose to become flesh for us in the form of Jesus, who taught us about who you are and then died for us to teach us the love you have. So, O oh God, in this world of suffering, let us live within the love of your sacrifice. Let us live in the love of what you gave us, life, both here and outside of here. And so, O oh God, we now share the same words that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now that we have prayed in faith, let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please continue standing if you are able and join in hymn number 405, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
And the scripture this morning, uh, oh yes, you, you can sit down. Uh, here we are, the responsive reading is first, here we go. God, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now. And the scripture this morning is Acts 14, verse 22, and Psalm 34, verse 19. Today we begin a series on the meaning of suffering. This series explores the varied facets of suffering and humanity's attempt to understand suffering. Can good come from suffering? Is suffering always bad? As Christians, how should suffering be understood? Today's scripture helps us to begin to explore the meaning of suffering as Christians. Acts 14, verse 22, there they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, it is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And Psalm 34, verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. The word of God for all people. And we have a song to this morning from Judy Stebner, a piano sol solo on Eagle's Wings.
All right, let's see if after I preach, somebody says bravo. <laughs> Mindy, I'm, I, I'm just saying. And then you guys know me well enough now that I've been here that I don't, I just jump right into these things. So there's no like, uh, let's gently walk into this. We're going to just jump in here. So here we go on suffering. The headline reads, I'm still getting echoing, aren't I? Yep. All right. Um... Echo? Do you, is there still an echo? Is that better? It's better? Better. Better still? I'm at the eye doctors. Is this better? Is that better? Is that better? All right, let's try this. The headline reads, two-year-old found bloodied underneath dying parents after parade shooting. Mama, Dada, come get me. That is Aiden McCarthy, a survivor of the Highland Park, Illinois shooting on July 4th. The journal entry reads, The world's been turned upside down. The most decent people are, having, are being sent to concentration camps, prisons and lonely cells, while the lowest of the low rule over the young and the old, rich and poor. One gets caught for black marketeering, another for hiding Jews or other unfortunate souls. Unless you're a Nazi, you don't know what's going to happen to you from one day to the next. A journal entry by Anne Frank. Once I was in D.C. doing some mission work, and I met Ernie, a war veteran, homeless on the streets of D.C., suffering from mental illness and disillusionment. I spent a night from about midnight to 6 a.m. hearing his story and watching the suffering he dealt with daily as whether he would be fed or not. Suffering is real. It occurs, and for some more than others, we all have some story of suffering, and we all have some story of surviving. For some, the suffering is intense, unthinkable and unreal. Physical abuse, being hit and beat up to the point of going to school and half your face is swollen, and you're walking with a limp, Sexual abuse of being used as an object and being told you're worthless. Emotional abuse telling you over and over you are less than and not good enough. For some, suffering comes from violence, emotional and physical. For some, suffering is due to the loss, uh, from loss due to the violence. For some, suffering comes in not having enough money to eat or provide for self or family. For others, suffering comes from illness and disease. For others, suffering is persistent and seems pervasive and overwhelming. Others suffer from war, famine, and corruption. Suffering is from being oppressed. Can you relate to suffering? Where have you suffered in your life? Where are you suffering now? And most importantly, where have you caused suffering? You see, that question's a hard one to swallow. Where have you caused suffering in your words and actions or lack of words and actions? You see, suffering is here to stay, and some of it is caused by you and me. That's not something we want to hear. But as Christians or those who are exploring the faith, we must. And I'm specific with that word, must. We must fight against creating suffering and fight for peace. Not necessarily justice, but peace. Peace means we can coexist with different thoughts and ideas, but coexist without harm. That's utopia, isn't it? Can you do that? Now, maybe you just answered that question in your head as yes, but think of the last time your word or action hurt someone. Intentional or not, the impact occurred and it's real. In that impact, harm was caused. How often do you create the suffering others experience? Suffering occurs not just with physical disease, but how we control and create impact on others that hurts. This isn't easy, and I'm sure you're wondering where the good news is in this. It's coming, I guarantee you. But let us just say a few more words about suffering. Suffering exists in many forms. So let's go to our scripture. 
a few points to consider in the scripture. First, Jewish texts usually associate suffering and violence with end times. If we use that as definition, wow, you look around what's happening in our world, we're at the end time, aren't we? In Acts, this verse is after lots of trials and issues and persecution of prior trips. It's in response to where they have suffered, knowing they're going to suffer more as missionaries. Now, this thought is that suffering has to occur to fully know God. In that one small verse, there's a word that says must in it. It is translated from the Greek word day, D-E-I. The actual definition of day is it is necessary, there is need of, it behooves, it is right and proper. See, in the Greek, it's suggesting causality. This sentence is the essence of the book of Acts because many scholars believe the book of Acts is about how God is in charge and in control, but yet not in control when suffering doesn't stop. You see, it's a duality that we live in, and it's hard to consider that why does there have to be suffering, but yet this is saying suffering will occur. The same word, day, D-E-I, is found in Acts 9.16. You see, the author of the book of Acts is making a point that suffering is part of life with God. That's a hard lesson, isn't it? Psalm 34 is actually an acrostic of the Hebrew alphabet, almost perfect, meaning each um, verse or each line begins with the first letter of the alphabet. It goes all the way down to the end of their alphabet, but it's missing one of them, and they added verse 22 to make it happy and make it a full acrostic. So it's almost perfect, but not quite. It's considered both an individual Thanksgiving worship psalm and a wisdom psalm because it intends to teach children. So it's a very unique psalm. The superscription is unclear because the king it's referencing couldn't have been the king that they were talking about. And so remember, superscriptions were added, and we don't know exactly when they were added, but they were added after these were written. And in this psalm, verses 12 to 16, is quoted in 1 Peter. The psalmist is being real. Suffering is going to happen even to the righteous. But even in suffering, God is there to deliver in God's way. Hear that again. God is there to deliver in God's way. You see, that's important to our faith. It's not our way. It's God's way. The psalm suggests God helps the righteous and judges the non-righteous. But life isn't that simple. You see, life is experienced in the midst of suffering, and God is experienced in the midst of suffering, not beyond it. That's hard to hear, isn't it? So what do these one-line scriptures have to say about what we're talking about? And as a quick aside, we shouldn't just take one line and say, here's what it means. That's why we looked at a few components of Acts in the Psalms and what is before and what is after and the whole meaning of it. However, even with that, these two lines essentially summarizes the meaning of suffering for us. The meaning or goal of suffering is to get to know God more and deeper. The meaning of life and suffering is to get closer to God. It's counter to what society teaches. So as I said that, that the goal or the meaning of life and suffering is to get closer and to know God deeper, what went through your mind? Do you agree? Or do you have an understanding of a God that God can stop suffering, that miracles can happen, that healing happens? If you're like me, then your answer is yes, you do. I mean, we have a belief system that's contradictory. On the one hand, we have ask and you shall receive in Mark and Matthew and James. We know miracles occur because that's part of the entire book we call the Bible. And then we have Jesus saying that with God, all things are possible in Mark and Luke. And then we have these verses we're looking at today saying you will suffer. I don't know about you, but faith is complicated and not easy. It's much easier to live a life of blame and to go to that drink or that pillow that gives you the best night's sleep, the advertisement says, or that TV show that will make you forget everything. You see, society has a lot of answers for us. 
But God only's answer is it's going to happen. And it's going to happen inconsistently, unfairly. And guess what? Your concept of fairness isn't mine. But God says you should live out of love regardless of what I do as God. Live out of love. Love me first and then others. And don't worry about the suffering. It's going to happen. Just love. Uh, I don't know about you. But what's going on here? Do you see and experience this duality? This challenge of part of what we are taught as Christians is God is going to save. And the other part is you're going to have suffering. I can get these intense attacks I call flares that can take me out physically and emotionally. And in some cases, I haven't been able to walk. And in that pain and discomfort, I don't focus on God. I don't grow closer. Can you relate? In your own pain and suffering, do you focus on God in that? Or are you focusing on the pain and suffering? But you see, there is meaning of the suffering is to grow closer to God in that pain. I'm not good with that. Are you? Her name was Pat. She suffered from many ailments, including kidney failure. Some of the last hospital visits I made with her, she was barely responsive. We did communion as best we could. I know she knew God in those last moments. She had a faith that never wavered. She knew. She was like all those I have visited before they passed. Their faith is strong, and I walk out of those meetings or those visits hoping that one day I can have that same faith. Can you relate? Do you have that faith that in the midst of intense suffering, you focus on God, or are you focusing on the loss and pain? Another, well, another, I'll come back to Pat in a second. Most of you know Mae Jansen, and I think I've shared this story before. One of my last visits with her as she was in her bed and all she could do was kind of roll from side to side. She looked at me as I was on the left side of her as she was rolling over. She goes, I don't know why God hasn't taken me yet. And then as she pulled the cover up and rolled over, she said, I guess it's just not time yet. And she began singing. That faith is what these verses are talking about. That in the middle and midst of the suffering, you are still worshiping God. Going back to Pat, I was called by, I think it was her sister, to say she passed away. Now, her son was blind, and I only met him a couple times, so I called him to reach out to him to say, I'm sorry your mother passed away. I didn't realize or wasn't told. Nobody told him she passed away. So when I called and said, I'm sorry your mom passed away, he said, my mom died. Without knowing it, I cause suffering in his life. You see, suffering is going to be part of our lives. And regardless, we're going to cause some of that suffering. So what's the meaning of all of this? Where is this good news that we know as Christians to be? We see suffering gives you and I the opportunity to experience God not just the thought of God. Hear that again. As Christians, as the good news people, we have the opportunity in suffering to experience God, not just think about God. And see, suffering lets us go from God and me, meaning God is out there, outside of me and distant, to God is with me, still outside of me, but closer. You see, this suffering lets me go from God and me that's God outside to God that's with me a little bit closer to God is in me. Suffering lets you and I get closer to God, but it's a choice you need to make. What choice are you making with your suffering? Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46.10, you probably know. And then in Exodus 3, 14, we hear, I am that I am. Knowing God, being still, that's how you and I need to navigate suffering. In the middle of our pain, our anguish, our oppression, we need to be still. That's the good news, that when we are still in the midst of our suffering, we get to experience God in new ways, in deeper ways, in a way that we have yet to experience. The... Um, Aramaic of I am that I am is Ham Sa. It's actually a meditation. 
And when you breathe in the hum and breathe out the sa, you are creating stillness and presence. So it goes hum, sa, hum, sa. I'm not good at it when I'm in pain or watching injustice and suffering, but yet you and I were called to do that. So in the middle of your suffering, in the middle of the pain, take a moment and just say, Ham sa. I am that I am. That was the answer that God gave when asked, Who can I, how can I call you? What do I call you? And God's answer is, I am that I am. It is, be still and know that I am God. You see, this isn't going to solve the confusing nature of God, and it's not going to completely create peace. But it can and will if it lets you create peace in those moments of loss, pain, abuse, trauma, fear, worry, and concern. You see, the choice is yours and mine. In suffering, we can grow closer to God. That's the good news. So let us be a church known for growing closer to God in suffering. And let us bring a peace that surpasses all understanding inside us and around us. Amen. And so what we also get to do based off of our relationship with God is to give back. And that is in our gifts, our presence, our witness, and our time. And so now I'll take a moment with God. Where are you called to give back? And we'll have the ushers come forward. so thankful for to you for the blessings that you give to us each day we give back to you all we have to serve you and to give you our tithes and our offerings our witness and our testimony it is in your kingdom that we are truly truly a part of please use this to further your kingdom in jesus name we pray amen So let's sing. Glorious things of thee are spoken. Number 731, you may stand, sit, clap, dance, do black flips, whatever you want. Let's just be loud so 
the group down the road hears us. from this place remembering that the meaning of suffering is to get closer to God hear these words of benediction God of all creation help us to see each other through your eyes so we can appreciate the beauty of diversity and difference help us to walk in your strength so we can challenge inequality and fight injustice help us to feel with your love so we can hold each other with compassion and kindness Help us to experience your peace so we can comfort those who are broken and suffering. Oh God, help us to be more like you this week. Amen. Sunday one. God bless. See you next week.